Hey guys, Nick here again, back to talk about The Walking Dead, Season 7, Episode 11, called Hostiles and Calamities. Or, doing my best Eugene impression, Hostiles and Calamities. Because of course, Eugene was the one who said that. The second I saw the name of the episode, I figured it was going to be Eugene who said it. So, uh, I am a huge fan of Eugene, I think he's one of the one of the best characters on the show, and I don't think they've been doing enough with him this season. So I was really excited to see him front and center. Plus, of course, Negan is always fun to watch for me. But as excited as I was for this episode, I still didn't think it would be as good as it was. It surpassed my expectations. So uh, let's get right into it and start with... The star of the episode, Eugene himself. Uh, this was Josh McDermott's best performance ever as Eugene. And I, I love his portrayal of the character. He's just, he gets so into it. Like, he he has become Eugene. Like, even in interviews, he's sort of adapted Eugene's awkward nature. And just Eugene the character also was was great. I love seeing his development because... In the comics, he did get, um, kidnapped. But, uh, he was... He was fighting Negan at every turn. He didn't want to do anything for him. So I was kind of expecting that to happen. But he actually seemed to be enjoying himself in the sanctuary. He seemed to be on a little bit of a power trip. Which was unexpected, but pretty interesting. Like, it was a very unexpected direction that they went in. It's nice to know that this show can still surprise me. And, uh... <laughs> one thing that didn't surprise me, though, was the return of Easy Street. <laughs> I mean, I thought that Eugene would be thrown into the cell that Daryl was in and be tortured with the song. So then when he gets the room that Negan offered Daryl, like the nice room... I'm like, oh, okay, I guess we won't have to hear it. And then Eugene pressed play on the stereo, and the song started, and I'm like, of course, they had to bring it back. I knew they were going to. I you can't say I'm surprised about it. And and Eugene was getting into it, too. He was kind of bobbing his head to it. He seemed to be enjoying it. That was pretty funny to me. Uh, the other star of this episode, who gets a lot of development, is Dwight. I mean, Dwight is just, he's such an interesting character to me because he is so conflicting. Just like, he wants to be a good guy. Like, he was once a good guy. We saw it. We saw a guy who was just kind of desperate and confused, but he wasn't evil when Daryl first met him in the woods. So seeing what he's become is kind of sad, but also kind of like, you know, because it's his own fault. So it's just kind of like, you know, you made this bed for yourself, so sleep in it. Like the scene where he, uh, where he figures out that Sherry helped Daryl escape. Now, I thought it was Jesus that helped Daryl escape. Because Jesus was right there waiting for him when Daryl got outside and killed Fat Joey. So I, I figured Jesus was the one who got him out, but... This episode confirmed that it was Sherry. And thinking about it, that does make more sense. Because how would Jesus know where Daryl was being held? Like, it would have been very tricky for him to find that out. So the scene when Dwight goes back to their old house. That was a really well done scene for me. Like It was really well made, well acted. The note she left him where she confirmed that she let Daryl out and that she just, she let him go because she knew that Daryl reminded Dwight of the guy he used to be. And Sherry kind of made Dwight into who he is now. She left because she couldn't really deal with that anymore, I guess. I definitely feel bad for her more than Dwight. Like, I do feel bad for Dwight, but he does... A lot of really bad stuff. Including... <laughs> Remember what I said before how this show can still surprise me? 
Well, they went next level with this one. Uh, with Dr. Carson's death. Now, this scene surprised me in so many ways. First of all, he's a doctor. Doctors are a pretty rare and valuable commodity in the zombie apocalypse. Like, if the zombie apocalypse really happened and I found myself with a doctor, I would go out of my way to protect him. Or her. Like, I would take a bullet for a doctor in the zombie apocalypse. Like, I'm cannon fodder. I know that. I can admit it. I've made peace with it. But I would, I would take a bullet for a doctor. They're important. Way more important than I could ever be. I, I can acknowledge that. So. So the fact that Negan was willing to kill his doctor at all was messed up. But on top of that, Carson is a character in the comics. He's not a doctor in the comics. The other Carson is a doctor, but there's a Carson who's a part of Negan's group. And he's not a doctor. At least, he was never shown being a doctor. So so I'm just assuming he wasn't. And he lived a lot longer in the comics. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I did in a previous video. I'm going to talk about some comic spoilers. So if you don't want to hear it, I'm going to take my hat off while I talk about it. And then so like you can just mute it. And then when I put my hat back on, you can unmute it. All right. So here goes. Comic spoilers. So... Later on in the comics, there's a group that they deal with that uh, the leader actually infiltrates their community and kills and decapitates 12 people. Like, a few of them were pretty important. Not all of them, but a few of them. And Carson was one of the victims. This Carson, not the, not the hilltop Carson, not the doctor. And, uh, so yeah, that, he's now the third one of those heads that's been killed off on the show already. Olivia was one of the other ones, and also, and this this might not even count, this might just happen to be a lady with the same name, but Erin, she was in the episode where the wolves invaded Alexandria back in season six, and Carol went on a killing spree and took them all out, and there was one lady that got stabbed, and Carol stabbed her to put her out of her misery. That was Erin, and her character... Or at least a character named Aaron in the comics ended up on the spikes. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming they're probably supposed to be the same person. Technically. But that's still three people. It's three people now. Aaron, Olivia, and now Carson. Yeah, so, um... Third way that this was shocking to me was because... Just the sheer... Just, it came out of nowhere, really. I mean, there's nothing like this in the comics. Like, th there's no equivalent scene. Like, this was... Like, some of the stuff that happens on the show is inspired from the comics, but sometimes they have stuff that they just came up with themselves. There's nothing like this in the comics. Yes, there's the face iron, but Negan never threw anybody in the oven. <laughs> I mean, that was... Like, I... I've become kind of numb to the violence at this point. I can admit that. I mean, I was... I reacted to the deaths of Glenn and Abraham in the premiere, but... I mean, I was kind of expecting it to happen, so I didn't, like, jump out of my seat. Well, Glenn, I kind of did, I guess. But this was my actual... I'm going to try to recreate my actual reaction to when Negan threw Carson in the oven. He takes him. Throws him in. Whoa! Seriously, I was I was blown away. I went I was just I I jumped. Seriously. I did. It was insane. It was such an insane scene. Like the the show can still surprise you. It really can. They every now and then they come up with something they come up with something new. <laughs> And it's just, it showed that Negan is just the most savage of the savages. I love him. I love Negan, but I know that he is, he's just super evil. He might have been a good guy once, but he's super evil now. He really is. Like, that's, that's next level savagery right there. And Jeffrey Dean Morgan is just a blast to watch as Negan. He always is. I have not been disappointed by Jeffrey Dean Morgan even once. 
He plays him so well. He's he's Emmy worthy in my opinion. He probably won't get one because the Emmys just don't know that The Walking Dead exists. Because if they did, Melissa McBride would have an Emmy by now. An Emmy or three. But Negan, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, absolutely Emmy worthy. So, um, one thing that a lot of people are talking about is, going back to Eugene, is he actually turning on Rick and the others? Like, there's some people that are like, okay, he's, he's Darth Eugene now. Some people really think that he's, he's changing. Because, like, even his attitude did kind of change a little over the course of the episode. Like, he became more of an alpha around people. Like, he can hold his own against walkers okay at this point. But he's still kind of a beta around people. But he's starting to alpha himself up a little. That being said, I think he's enjoying the power trip he's on now. But the day is going to come when Negan asks him to make bullets for the Sanctuary. To use against Rick and the others. And Eugene will not do it. He won't. I... I bet he will not. I can almost guarantee that he won't. He's enjoying the power trip now, but he's loyal. He is loyal to the others, and he... He won't. There's also some people out there that have thrown the idea around that maybe Eugene's just kind of playing the part right now. Because it's what Negan wants. Which is what some people were um, saying Daryl should have done when he was held captive. Negan asked Daryl, who are you? Daryl just said that he's Daryl. Negan didn't even get the whole question out. And Eugene said, I'm Negan. I'm thoroughly and completely Negan. <laughs> like, some people think that he's just saying it because it's what Negan wants to hear. And he could use it to try and get close to him. I mean, that's possible. That definitely seems more in character for Eugene than Daryl, because Daryl is just rebellious. That's it. It's in his nature, basically. So, I, one way or another, Eugene is not turning on the group. No way. So, yeah, that, that'll pretty much do it for my review of this episode. I loved it. I loved every second of this episode. This was... An even better episode than I could have hoped, and I'm gonna give it perfect 10 out of 10. The characters were good, the acting was good, it had some truly unexpected moments that just blew my mind. And the whole thing was just a lot of fun to watch. I really appreciate it, and uh, I'll be sure to see you guys next week with my review of the next episode. It's gonna be Rick and Michonne heavy, that should be good. Bye, guys.